So I just wanted to do this because we five found the videotape, so I want to show it. So um, Aaron and I, as we talked about, they have been the, uh, the targets of a smear campaign by the Young Turks. And uh, Cenk Uger even went on uh, the Hill to try to smear me as a Nazi. And we, he got caught lying. Uh, and here it is. Everything he's saying, by the way, he could be saying into a mirror. He's this is huge projection. Again, if you know anything about Jungian psychology, it's huge projection right here. And we're going to show it to you. Why uh, we're going to show the facts how it is. Your thoughts on the ongoing feud with Jimmy Dore, which I know a lot of our viewers are following very closely. Do you have anything to add um, to his most recent, I would say, uh, comments on that issue? Everything he says is over the top, uh, ridiculous. It's lies. He's, I mean, his lies about me are endless. He says I'm in favor of bombing Syria. I've never said that. He's a preposterous liar. He's a ridiculous liar. By the way, I caught one. He's a preposterous liar. I'm a preposterous liar. Well, here we go. Let's just enjoy this video, shall we? So I'm curious, Jimmy, that you might agree with that, like, that this doesn't accomplish much, and hence what's the point. But... Uh, does that mean that if it did accomplish more, you'd be in favor of it or no? He means bombing Syria. Would I be in favor of bombing Syria if it accomplished a lot? Is this where you go nuclear? This is, well, this is where I, this is, this is where I show another gear. I don't go nuclear. This is where I actually show another gear. Watch this. No. So you're against it under all circumstances? So under all circumstances, I'm against it. Because it's just more war and there's no reason to it. Certainly not the reason they're giving us. Um, I have a hard time believing that Barack Obama gives a shit about the civilians in Syria. I really don't think he cares. And because uh, like, if he did care, if, if that was really this litmus test of innocent people, why wouldn't? Why aren't we bombing North Korea? Why aren't we bombing? Because our- we can't. And isn't that fair? Look, I'm going to take you guys on on that, okay? Because so we can't bomb Russia if Russia uses chemical weapons because we don't want to start World War III. You're right, absolutely yeah. right. Okay, but why don't we take you know take the low lying fruit? Okay, yeah. like send a message wherever we practically oh, okay. can. So. So not only is Jeg for bombing Syria, he's for bombing anywhere we practically can. North Korea, I'd right. love to decapitate all the leaders in North okay. Korea. He'd love to go do a coup in another country. He'd love to decapitate all their leaders. What are you talking about? and set that country free. But we might lose Seoul, South Korea, and millions of people. Mm-hmm. We can't do hours. it, yeah. right? And mm-hmm. if we can do it in Syria and help some people, well, okay, that's a good place to start. Well, the reason why you can't selectively enforce the law is because it breeds disrespect and contempt for the law. So if you're trying to uphold international law selectively, you're doing the exact opposite. You're undermining international law. Mm. So if you wanted to uh, really set a line, you would have went after Israel for using phosphorus in Gaza. You would have went after the United States for using phosphorus in Fallujah. If you wanted to, if you cared about international norms, uh, you would have maybe bombed America because we illegally invaded Iraq and we uh, million people were killed displaced other millions countless how many thousands of innocent people were killed in that that was an illegal war we lied about it where's our what if nobody kept us in check somehow we have to still keep other people in check i said it yesterday you can't have tony soprano giving out parking tickets it doesn't fucking work yeah but if you but here's the, the yes you that it's totally hypocritical but then we're paralyzed and can't do anything and if tony soprano is elected sheriff he's going to hand out parking tickets and no one's going to respect it no one's going to pay that ticket. You can't have the mafia giving you a parking ticket. People aren't going to respect that ticket. They're not going to respect the law. That's going to breed law, more lawlessness. And when we see you selectively enforcing it, you can't have Tony Soprano selectively enforcing the parking laws. You can't have Tony Soprano, the biggest criminal in this, in this town, selectively enforcing parking laws. And so that's why, and so look, I mean, that's my good friend Ben Makowitz, and there he is arguing for war. They're all pro-war. It's a, it's a problem. Okay, uh, I, I disagree. I think we could start being consistent. Yeah, I, think okay, we could, but, I think we but, could stop torturing people in Guantanamo. I think we could stop torturing people in our own prison systems. There's a lot of inhumane shit happening right here that we could fix first. Why do we got to do this? Because that's not what it's about, you guys. So... 
I'm pushing back against the idea that Ben was forwarding and Jenk is forwarding that when we bomb, we're bombing because we try to help people. If we wanted to try to help people, we would end our torture program. We would close Guantanamo. We would end our criminal justice, that racist criminal justice system. We're the largest penal colony in the world. We could start right here if we wanted to help people. They're not bombing because they want to help people. That's the point. They're not bombing to help people. They're bombing to do imperialism and to steal natural resources for corporations like they always have. As if you, you well, guys keep what pretending, you, what do you, think, it's you about? think this is about chemical weapons? No, this no, is that's so about? ridiculous. What I don't know about? what it's about. Right. I have to speculate because the government is lying. Uh-huh. I, you know, people, a lot of people said, well, this is a sense because of Iran. We have to send a, a, a message because Iran might try something or North Korea. We have to send a message. And I'm like, so this isn't about this. So this is and so now we have to kill other innocent people to send the message that you're not supposed to kill innocent people in a worse way. It's just so backwards. I can't believe that I, I have I, to argue this point. I think you're right on the second half, which is that. It's crazy that we have to kill innocent people to send the message that we shouldn't kill innocent people. And I think that that's it. I, I don't know what the message is, and I don't think there's some here. I don't see it. No one's presented it to me. You haven't presented it here either, which you even said you don't know. But, like, I don't get why it would be except for the reasons. I just think those reasons, and so do you, those reasons don't have, those reasons aren't strong enough. I think that when we live in a world where 100,000 civilians are killed, in Syria, right, or 100,000 killed Mm -hmm. in in Syria, many of them combatants, but many of them civilians, right, most almost certainly Mm -hmm. not. And then we, for two years that goes on, and we live in a world where Wolf Blitzer gets to ask on CNN, why don't you think anybody cares about Syria? Like, well, you don't talk about it. Nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about it. Nobody showed us those bodies. Then we get a moment where chemical weapons are used, um, and we see the bodies, and we have this reaction. Inconsistent as it may be, people reacted differently to that because they saw it, and all of a sudden there was intense coverage of Syria. I don't. My hunch is, if we'd had that kind of coverage, if we'd seen 400 dead babies on month three, killed by a missile strike or executed in a room, then maybe there would have been a movement to attack then. So, so, so why don't we? Do, we don't go to the international court. We don't. Do, we don't. We don't uh, have a, a, a right. We don't prosecute them. This is a crime. So why don't we prosecute them? Why don't we put out a, a warrant for his arrest, Assad's arrest? Why don't we do it like that, like the rest of the world does against Dick Cheney and George Bush, because they're war criminals. That's why they can't travel internationally. So, why don't we do it that way? So let me build off of Ben's point. So Jimmy, if you're saying we've been hypocritical in the past, and in the current, right now, and, and, we're hypocritical. in the very, very recent past, right? <laughs> okay. Currently, yeah, no, like, like I agree. Monday, with you. Right? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Of course, I agree with you. Right? That's not the sensible position. That's the correct position. It's, it's a matter based on facts. Okay, you're right about that. But uh, in the same, uh, by the same point that Ben was making during the civil rights movement, we could have said, I mean, you're telling me that the country that has, you know, enslaved these people, that has oppressed them, that has segregated them, that has done all this stuff, oh, now you're going to trust them to do civil rights? Well, you got to start somewhere. Yes, you're right. We were a giant hypocrite and we were terrible, etc. And part of the reason, you know, look, this is goofy because I just saw the the butler and it it had this scene in it, but JFK in that that movie says, I I didn't know this was my country because he... And, and to put the movie aside, most a lot of people saw that kind of vicious racism for the first time. Vicious. I mean, they've seen mm-hmm. you know other forms of racism throughout, right? But in the in the north, the west, etc., they're like, oh my god, look at what they're doing to those people. It's the first time they saw it on tape, so it changed them. So is it possible this is the same where we actually see the dead kids and it changes opinion a little bit? Plus, this is the beginning to fixing our hypocrisy. First of all, no one thinks this is going to solve the problem. No one thinks this is going to stop him from using chemical weapons again. That, Yet we're still going to do it. I think some people think that. I think that I think that if we you punish think- him harshly enough for using it, could just him from using it in the future. How many innocent people do you have to kill to make that? I don't know and what number will be, <laughs> but if we don't do it. I don't know. Well, that you, that you, how, could you, how could you be advocating killing innocent people if you don't have a number for how many we have to kill? <laughs> what? He's advocating this. But do you see the argument that's going on? Do you see I'm the only one against all of them and I have to push back? That's the way it was all the time over there. That's the way it was with Russiagate. That's the way it was with the Mueller. That's the way it was with all their garbage. So they're in lockstep with the mainstream media. They're in lock, the lockstep. Lockstep with the MSNBC. 
It would be pretty you, high. You talked so if you just do a few really, minutes ago, okay, go ahead. you talked just a few minutes ago about the, the, the alleged and probable use of white phosphorus weapons in Israel earlier this year. Now, Israel says they did not use it in its weaponized form. It has both weaponized and non-weaponized forms. It can be used just to screen troop movements and things like that. We even use it for that purpose. So if we don't punish Assad for using chemical weapons, doesn't that send a message to Israel in the future? That even you, like, they, they oh, did look, get Oh, look, come on, John, I was with you that. until you said that. Uh, hey, no, guys, no, I'm not saying it's Israel's not just like, about, oh, what if the U.S. bombs us for using chemical weapons? No, no, no I, I'm not saying we're threatening to <laughs> right. bomb them, but I'm saying that we, it's not just, we're going to talk about the red line. I totally understand that. Do you see oh how you have, to, you have to bread yourself in pretzels if you want to call yourself a progressive and be pro-war and imperialism? Do you see how you have to bet you see that even they have to call each other out on their bullshit? Chemical weapons are banned internationally. It's not just because Obama said something two years ago that all of a sudden we developed some sort of opposition to chemical weapons. Yeah, They're yes, banned, right. and that ban is supposed to mean something. And just because the rest of the world won't step up and actually say these weapons should continue to be banned and a threat should go behind that ban, does that mean that just because the rest of the world won't do anything, we shouldn't stand up? Okay. When that's oh, by the way, I didn't know this at the time, but America was still making cluster bombs, which are considered a uh, war crime. So we were making we were making cluster bombs up until just a few years ago, right? Right in the northeast. I think it was in Connecticut. I'm not sure. Don't quote me. But we were making cluster bombs. Okay. Sorry? Yes. Uh, uh, listen, on that point, on that point I agree 100% with John. Now, Jimmy, no, hold, on, hold, hold on. on. No, no, Steve, hold on. Right, uh, let me let me address the panel. Okay. <laughs> Jimmy, I got to ask you this. Okay. So is there any red line for you? So if, uh, if we don't bomb them, right? And Assad goes, great, there's a green light, man. I mean, I'm I'm, so hold on, hold on. So he thinks, okay, well, they're not going to do anything. And he's right, we're not going to do anything, right? So he says, okay, well, if I got free reign and these guys have been a pain in my ass for two and a half years, that's it. I'm going to unleash sarin gas on all of them, okay? Uh, so last time I killed 1,400, this time I'm going to kill 140,000 with chemical weapons, and nobody's going to do a goddamn thing about it. Do you, I mean, so what's your take on that? One, that won't happen. Two, that's not on us. These are legitimate positions, right? But I'm curious what your take on it is. And is there any line where you would say, all right, let's, let's come on, we got to do something? Well, this idea that uh, the answer to a war crime is more war is what I'm rejecting. So I don't think you saying, is there any, can Assad do anything so horrible that you would okay some missile strikes? Isn't there another way to handle a war crime? Don't aren't you supposed you to go to an international before. court? So don't if, don't you go to the U, wait wait let's, let's just don't you go to that. the UN and you try to get the UN but you try to rally the world don't you aren't there nonviolent ways to deal with this first or you no. just immediately even before the UN has this report in you just go ahead and we, we got to bomb these guys so this rush to war is so ridiculous and because I don't think that's why they're going in Jenk and if you think they're going in for chemicals I'll have to respect that but I don't think that that's why they're going in okay so. Listen, I do, I do think they're going in for chemical weapons because they have no interest in Syria. They let that war fester. And We're occupying a third of Syria right now. What are we occupying? The oil and their wheat fields. And we're not letting them rebuild. We're sanctioning them. We have a big interest in Syria. Why? Because Israel's interested in Syria and Qatar's interested in Syria and Saudi Arabia's interested in Syria. That's why. 100,000 people die for two and a half years because there's no oil in Syria and they don't give a damn about Syria. And that's what we've been saying here all this time. And that's what you've agreed to and a lot of progressives have agreed to. Now, all of a sudden, what changed the equation? The chemical weapons changed the equation. If, 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 uh, if the evidence on chemical weapons comes back, overwhelmingly yes, but the Security Council says no, the Congress says yes, you say no. I'm torn on that. Here I am, yeah. back to torn on that right. issue, if it came down to that. But that's a perfectly legitimate argument to make. 25 years ago, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, pre-George Bush, we didn't question Bill Clinton's motives for the for for Kosovo. We, we didn't question it in and we didn't question it anywhere where we, we sent humanitarian aid to. And now all of a sudden we doubt everything. We think there's some ulterior motive. I don't. I think it's this. I don't think I, but I but then I swing back to Jimmy's point is I think the motive is pure, but I and and if I would I, what I, who I want to agree with more than anybody is John's point Except I need somebody who's incredibly smart to say, <laughs> oh, this will work. This will have some. If it has no effect, yeah, then you're just a, a, that's a big problem. Then you're yeah. just a 12-year-old teenager who's killing the kid who had nicer sneakers. General like, Lester. then it's just about respect. 
and it's silly and a giant waste of time. I know General Westmoreland said uh, after 9-11, he went over to the Pentagon. Well, I'm sorry. Wesley and uh, the guy told him, hey, guess what? We're going to go into Iraq. What, are we going to, what did Iraq have to do with this? He goes, I don't know, nothing. A couple weeks later, he went back. He goes, you're not going to believe this. We're going to go into Syria. We get Lebanon. We're, they're going into the, they got a whole place planned to reshape the Middle East. This is right after 9-11. They had plans, plans to go okay, into Syria. Jimmy, so I'm just yeah, saying, don't sure think that people do. ever wanted to do this for a long time. Okay, and I'm not so, saying that's exactly what this is, but this isn't chemical weapons. So, so a couple of things on that, and I want to go on to what Obama said. It, it was generally Wesley, uh, Wesley Clark. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I said Westmoreland. Uh, yeah, it's okay. It's, 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 it starts the same exact way. Yes. Um, so, uh, and, and Wes Clark is right about that, and we all know about that. That was the neocon plan, and they wrote it out even before they came into the Obama administration. But I don't Bush think that's what... I'm sorry, before the Bush administration. I don't think that's what's playing out here. Because if you want to go to Syria next, you had two and a half years to make that case. They never even made the case. It's not like the neocons don't know how to do propaganda. You press that button and a wall of propaganda hits the American people. They didn't press the button. I don't know why Israel flipped on it, but they did. So is that part of our decision making? Have you been paying attention to American politics? Of course it's part of our decision making. But I don't view that as nefarious. I view that as like, I don't know, like... Uh, if, it, if you're Israel, Assad is never going to harm you. And so the fact that they're now saying we should attack Assad, I don't think that's a bad thing. <laughs> okay. So now here's that tape we were talking about. And this shows, this is why we're going into Syria. And it has nothing to do with chemical weapons. The, believe me, the America doesn't give a shit that someone's using chemical weapons. <laughs> Here we go. About 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz. I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the joint staff who had used, used to work for me. And one of the generals called me and he said, sir, you got to come in. You got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, we've made the decision. We're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq. Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> He said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They have just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And um, he said, I guess if, if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. So I came back to see him a few weeks later, and by that time we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper, and he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense's office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. And that's why. Uh, because the establishment, the military industrial complex, uh, they want it. They wanted to go in and they wanted to overthrow Sada, uh, Assad for a long time. So there you go. 